Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2016-2017 Teacher Workshop Series. Today's problem is number five on the new general curriculum math subtest. This is a nice problem involving decimals and fractions. It's on an intermediate level, so it's very appropriate for, uh, let's say, an elementary school teacher or a middle school teacher taking their teacher certification exam. There's not a lot of language, but the math is a little tricky. So it's definitely a really good one to take a look at. We'll start by reading it over, and then we'll go through a strategy on how to solve this. I'll start by reading over number five here. It says, for which of the following pairs of numbers is the number 3.45 larger than the first number, but smaller than the second number? All right. Let's circle the 3.45. We are definitely, this is our central number and we're looking for numbers or values where this one's going to be less, this one's going to be greater. And if I if and if I'm if I want to look at, think about this in terms of uh, 3.45, I could say that 3.45 is going to be greater than this first one, and it's going to be less than this one right here. To help me out with that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, I'm going to make a little I'm going to evaluate numbers and put them in this chart here. And I'm going to see which, which numbers are less and which are greater. Like, for example, uh, a value that's less than 3.45 could be like 3 and a quarter. Is that right? Or like 3 and a, a fourth. Those values are less than 3.45. And values that are greater uh, could be... 3.5 or three and a half. Those, if those were, were in any of these columns here, they would work. Do you agree? If this was the first one and this was the second one, well, they would meet the criteria that we're looking for that would match up with 3.45 being larger than the first one, but less than the second one. Now, I put these examples out here uh, just so that I am clear on what I'm looking for when I evaluate A, B, C, and D. This just makes it a little bit more concrete and gives me something to, uh, to gauge my answers. All right? Let's look at these options here. You'll notice that there are eight different fractions here. And a lot of teachers are very, very tempted to start with A and do the first one, then the second one, and go down the list and do all eight calculations. And I don't think that's the right approach. Let's look at this closely. Does everyone notice there's some fractions that repeat? Like the 13 four fourths, those both repeat. How about this? The 7 halves, those are repeating values. Or let's say the uh, 15 fourths. Look at that. So when you see something like this, what this means is you don't have to do eight calculations, you only have to do three. And those three should give you enough information to eliminate three of the choices and correctly identify the right scenario. Does everyone see that? It's very, very important that you start seeing these things. This is how they write these exams. They give you eight, and for the teacher that is uh, just doing it the old-fashioned way, they will do eight calculations. But the teacher who's looking for patterns will only do three and you'll save, you'll save yourself a lot of time. Let's start here. Let's evaluate each one of these fractions and see where they, where they fall. Uh, I'll move some space over here. Start with the 13 fourths. That's equivalent to 12 fourths plus 1 fourth. Is that right? Now 12 fourths is uh, 3 and a quarter. So 3 and a quarter well, we just said here three and a quarter matches up with something that's less. So 13 fourths would fall under the less category, this one right here. So it doesn't make sense that it's in this column here. Maybe I should, maybe I should uh, put, a, put some symbols here so we're on the same page. We're looking for numbers that are less than the 3.45 and looking for numbers that are greater. And right now, we just determined that the 13 fourths it's less, so it doesn't make sense. So I could cross out this one, and A would all automatically be disqualified. Now, um, because it's less, and we did find something that is less, 
you know, this one actually works. Right now, that, that looks pretty good. We have to have two hits. It can't just be, it can't just be the uh, first value. So we know that this is less, and there's a check there. Let's go to the, let's let's evaluate the next fraction. Seven over two is equivalent to six over two plus one over two. That's like three and a half. Well, wait a second. Three and a half, that's greater than. So seven over two falls under our greater than. And look, we just found a double match. We found out that three fourths is less than the 3.45. And 7 halves is greater than, we just found a double whammy. B, in fact, is the answer. The first uh, number is less, the second number is more. Let's just continue on and just work through this strategy, though. We've, we, did two, we, we solved two fractions out of the eight, and we got the answer. But if we were just to follow through with the strategy, we'd be like, this is greater than. So for that reason, we could cross out C. And we could evaluate this now, 15 fourths. That's the same as, how would I break down 15 fourths? I'd make it 12 fourths plus 3 fourths equal 15 fourths. 12 fourths is a 3, 3 fourths. So, so 3 and 3 fourths would fall under the greater than category. And that would fall over here. And you know what? It, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work in this column because it's greater than. And this is less than, so I could cross out that. Now look, the answer is B here. I only had to do two calculations to figure out that B worked both times. And that's a lot better than doing all eight out. So when you do these problems, I guarantee in a problem like this, there's going to be repetition. So you really only have to do three types of evaluations, not eight. That's going to save you time. And stuff like this, this stuff right here on a scrap sheet of paper, it only takes 30 seconds to do. And coming up with concrete things to look out for as potentials will help save time. It will help you save time, not guess, because you'll already be, have an idea of what might work. Okay? All right, team, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Have an awesome day. Take care. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2016 Teacher Workshop Series. This year, Go Academy is holding a whole new round of workshops in math, science, English and history, early childhood education, foundations of reading, ESL and SEI. These are hands-on workshops designed to help teachers pass their teacher certification exams. I encourage you to check out an upcoming workshop. We're holding them in Massachusetts, New York, North Carolina, Florida, California, New Hampshire, Vermont, and a couple other states. Check out our workshop. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care.